Hello students. In this video lecture, we are going to do the poem Shadwell and the poet is John Dryden. You must know that this poem is basically an extract from a longer poem whose name was MacFleckno. And if I may just write the name over here that this poem is an extract from the poem Mac Fleckno. And if you divide this into two parts, then Mac means son of and Fleckno is a name. So it is son of Fleckno. And it was written as a reaction to a poem that was written by Thomas Shadwell. And if you see the name which is written over here, Shadwell, which is the title of your poem, this is actually a name. This is the name of a poet whose full name was Thomas Shadwell. And this poet was like an enemy poet of John Dryden. And Shadwell first wrote a poem in which he criticized Dryden, he insulted Dryden and Dryden would not just take it lying down and he wrote this poem Mac Fleckno as a reaction to or as a response to the poem that Thomas Shadwell has had written. And of course, now you understand that this is like an enmity between two poets, John Dryden and Thomas Shadwell, in which both of them are writing against each other. And John Dryden is a famous satirist. He is a poet who can write great satires. And as we move on, you will understand how sharp and how biting his satires are. And so we move on to the text of our poem. As we begin with the text of the poem, first of all, I would like to explain why has the poet used this as the title of the longer poem from which this extract has been taken. It is important to understand the title. Uh, only then you will be able to appreciate the satire of uh, uh, Dryden. And as I said, he, the word Mac means son of. And Fleckno is the name of a poet. But who was this poet of which uh, he is using the name? Dryden is using the name. And it is Richard Fleckno. He was a seventeenth century. Okay, I'm sorry. He was a seventeenth century Irish poet of disrepute. Disrepute means that uh, uh, he was really not uh, considered to be a good poet. So, as far as poetry is concerned, he was an inferior poet. You can say he did not have much talent of writing poetry. So, one thing I hope is clear to you that uh, who is Fleckno? Fleckno was a 17th century poet and he was of inferior quality. So, when you call somebody son of Fleckno and if that person is a poet, then I hope it is clear that you want to say that whoever is the son of Fleckno would also be a poet of inferior quality. So, that is important to understand. Here, now, uh, because the title of our poem is Shadwell, And as I have already told you that his full name was Thomas Shadwell. He was a poet who was writing at the same time as Dryden was writing. Both of them were contemporaries. Who is Dryden? Dryden is the poet of this poem. So, Shadwell wrote a poem about Dryden in which he criticized him. And now Dryden wrote this long poem called Macfleckno, calling Shadwell the son of 
Flecknoe and in this way he insulted Shadwell by telling him that you are also a poet of very inferior quality, uh, in, uh, an inferior talent just like Flecknoe. So I hope that is clear to you. But then uh, the question arises, why are we reading this poem now? After so many decades, after so much time has passed, why is this important? Uh, why as a reader, it is obviously our right to question, why should we read this poem? Is there something else apart from personal enmity of two poets? Ya to do poets ki dushmani hi nazar a rahi hai. Kya uske alawa bhi koi baat ho sakti hai that we are reading this poem right now? And of course, the answer is yes. That is the that is why we are, uh, we are, we have uh, include this, uh, this text has been, this extract has been, included in your anthology of poems because it is above that personal enmity ye ek dushmani se thode upar hatke baat aa jati hai if we consider it in a general sense general sense ka kya matlab hota hai when this applies to the whole of mankind it applies to every human being uh, and uh, what applies to every human being that sometimes we meet people who are inferior to us and they consider themselves to be, um, you know, too good. And at that time, it is important to, uh, to maybe, you know, tell them or show them their place. Uh, it happens with us all the time that we meet people um, who are condescending or maybe you know who, who are like prigs considering themselves to be superior Apne aap ko zyada samajna, jaise hum kehte hai. then it becomes very important through uh, uh, through mockery or satire to show them their place and this poem also depicts the very sharp wit Jaisa ki kaha chata hai ki uh, mazaak karna uh, ya fir ek tarah se aap keh sakte hai ki humor create karna ek bhoat badi kala hai. Ye kisi aam admi ke baat ba, bas ki baat nahi hai. It requires a lot of talent to create humor and also it requires similar talent to create satire. So here the poet has displayed his skill of creating satire by writing this poem. So, we know the skill of poet, satire is an art in our own, we also know about it. And we also know about human tendency. And again, um, before I begin reading the text, there is another important thing that you must note down and that is, this poem is a mock epic. M-O-C-K mock epic. And mock epic means, first of all, what is an epic? Epic is a type of poem. Written with lofty subject. And with heroes, rulers warriors as their subject matter or protagonist you can say so an epic is a poem which has a lofty lofty means it is not it does not deal with commonplace subjects kuch bada hi subject hota hai aisi poem ka theme jo hota hai wo bahut hi bada hota hai jaise jis jo ki ya to duniya ke bare mein ho ya fir kisi bahut country ke baare mein ho puri ki puri ya fir bhagwan ke baare mein koi aisi badi theme common place aam aadmi wali theme nahi hoti hai epic poem ki secondly uske jo protagonist rehte hain uske jo characters hote hain jinke aas paas wo poem revolve karti hai they are heroes and rulers and warriors to wo bhi koi aam aadmi nahi hote this is a characteristic of an epic poem lekin hum ise epic nahi keh rahe hum ise mock epic keh rahe mock epic means it is a satire in the form of an epic. Hai wo satire. Lekin aise likha gaya hai ki jaise kisi bohut bade raja ki, bohut bade ruler ke baare mein uski story batai ja rahi hai. Par asli mein hum jaante hai, this is not about any warrior or any hero. This is about a poet and that too a poet who is of inferior quality. 
I hope this concept is clear so that now we can start with the actual poem and let us make some space to write down the meanings here. Um, in this poem, there is humor and you will in, uh, definitely appreciate the sharp wit of the poet also. And I am reading. The poet says, all human things are subject to decay. Of course, with all human things, he means to say man or a human being. And when he says subject to decay, uh, he means to say that we are all mortal. We are not immortal. One day we are going to die. Subject to decay means we, every human being knows that one day he is going to die. And when fate summons, fate means destiny, fate kismat hoti hai. But here destiny means death. When fate summons, summons means when death calls out to you, even monarchs must obey. So, it is very clear that death will not even spare kings. Kings must also answer the call of death. So, death is equal for everybody, be it a uh, uh, a, a poor man or be it a king. So, at least in the first two lines, he is stating a kind of a universal truth. He is saying, he is telling us a fact which everybody knows and everybody realizes that man is mortal and ultimately when his or her time comes, uh, it does not matter how rich or poor he is, uh, he must answer to that call of death. And then, uh, see how he has started using monarch here because he is going to talk of an, a monarch. He says this Flecno found who like Augustus Young was called to empire and had governed long. And he says this means this fact which he has stated in uh, the first two lines. He says this fact Flecno found. Flecno also started understanding that even though I am a king. So here uh, Flecno, uh, do you remember in the first, uh, in the very beginning only I told you that uh, Flecno is Richard Flecno uh, who, uh, who was that poet of ill repute and he says this Flecno found, found means Flecno also realized that his time of death is near and even a powerful ruler as him must answer to death. Up the question is, we were saying that Flecno was a poet and here I am uh, saying that Flecno was a ruler. So, how is Flecno a ruler? Is it in reality or is it just in representation? Of course, it is not in reality. The poet is merely using it as a satire. जैसे हम किसी को कहते हैं कि ये तो बेवकूफी का बादशाह है, ठीक है? तो उस तरह से उस तरह से कि उसको बादशाह भी कहना है एंड एट द सेम टाइम इंसल्टिंग हिम आल्सो दिस इज द सटायर दैट हियर द पोएट हैज आल्सो यूज्ड बाय कॉलिंग फ्लेक्नो अ अ वेरी पावरफुल मोनार्क रूलर लेकिन वो कौन से एंपायर का रूलर है ऐसी कौन सी उसका राज्य है जिसके ऊपर वो रूल कर रहा है was called to empire and had governed long. पहले तो हम ये meaning समझ लेते हैं इन दो लाइनों का लाइन नंबर थ्री एंड लाइन नंबर फोर ही सेज हु मीन्स फ्लेक्नो हु वॉज हु हैड बिकम एन एम्पर एट अ यंग एज ही हैड बिकम एन एम्पर एट अ यंग एज एंड हेयर द पोएट इज यूजिंग अ सिमिली वेर ही कंपेयर्स he is using a simile where he compares like Augustus. 
Now, who is Augustus? That is the question. He was a Roman emperor who became a ruler at a very young age and governed his kingdom for long. See how he is using a, the simile with a very powerful ruler. So Augustus was indeed a Roman emperor who can be called a monarch, who can be called powerful. And here Flecno is being compared to uh, Augustus. And as I said, this is the poetic device of a simile which he has used. And the reason that he is comparing Flecno with Augustus is that both of them became rulers at a young age. Kehne ka matlab hai ki Flecno bhi bohat choti umar mein poetry likhne laga. Aur uski poetry jo thi, wo bohat hi zada bikar shuru se hi thi. Yani ki bohat choti umar se hi he started writing poetry. But all of it turned out to be of inferior quality. Called to empire, the meaning of this is became king. So, Flecno and Augustus both became rulers at a young age and governed long. Governed long means they remained rulers for a long time. In prose and verse was owned without dispute. Without dispute means without doubt. So in the world of literature, it was owned means it was believed without any doubt. Through all the realms of nonsense absolute. Yani ki prose and verse. Prose hota hai. Fiction, verse hoti hai. Poetry. Yani ki poore literature mein. Poore literature mein. Aisa mana jata tha. Bina doubt ke. Ki poori nonsense. Kingdom ka jo raja hai. Realms means the kingdom of. Nonsense. Nonsense, of course, everybody knows what nonsense is. Here, the poet is actually started his satire when he says that the kingdom on which Flecno ruled was the kingdom of nonsense and he was the undisputed ruler. Koi kisi ko koi doubt hi nahi tha literature mein agar koi ek hai jo nonsense kingdom ka raja ban sakta hai to wo Flecno hi hai. Ab aap samajh gaye how I was comparing this with the normally how we satirize people, hum mazak udate hai to hum usko bada chada ke kehte hai. Aur wo badana chadana jo hota hai wo basically it is a form of mocking, it is a form of satire. We don't really mean it. Yahaan pe bilkul bhi bohat serious way mein aap nahi keh sakte ki Dryden is calling him the king or the monarch. Woh usko mazaak udate hue keh raha hai ki agar poore literature mein koi bina doubt ke nonsense shahar ka raja tha to woh siraf flekno hi tha. Abhi to Dryden has not come to Shadwell. He is only talking about about Flecno क्योंकि Shadwell पे वो बाद में आएगा पहले वो Flecno की तारीफ तो कर ले and here I would also like to bring to your notice if you can see clearly as I have removed all the markings here if you can see clearly what is the rhyme scheme before we move on please understand that we have already we have always done with other poems also the structure so what is the rhyme scheme here so talking of the rhyme scheme if you can see that bk obey young long so a a b b and in the same way dispute absolute c c so the whole poem as we go on and on how will the whole poem move on the poem will move on in this way only that the structure of this poem is in rhyming couplets 
and what is the meaning of couplet 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 means two lines so when two lines rhyme with, with each other two lines are rhyming with each other one after the other a a b b c c d d and so on this type of rhyming structure is called a rhyming couplets and in a real epic poem also such a structure is used so in a mock epic also the poet is using this kind of structure so i think uh, in the first video lecture this is enough and i will see you in my next video lecture thank you very much